Since it was first published in 1563, the Heidelberg Catechism has been a blessing to many generations of God's people. This recording of the Catechism has been produced with a desire to encourage God's people in the doctrines contained in this most helpful tool as it reflects the teaching of Holy Scripture. The Heidelberg Catechism, Lord's Day 1, Question 1. What is your only comfort in life and in death? That I with body and soul, both in life and in death, am not my own, but belong to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ, who with his precious blood has fully satisfied for all my sins, and redeemed me from all the power of the devil, and so preserves me that without the will of my Father in heaven, not a hair can fall from my head, indeed, that all things must work together for my salvation. Wherefore, by his Holy Spirit, he also assures me of eternal life, and makes me heartily willing and ready from now on to live unto him. Question 2. How many things are necessary for you to know that in this comfort you may live and die happily? Three things. First, the greatness of my sin and misery. Second, how I am redeemed from all my sins and misery. Third, how I am to be thankful to God for such redemption. The first part of man's misery. Lord's Day 2. Question 3. From where do you know your misery? From the law of God. Question 4. What does the law of God require of us? Christ teaches us in Psalm Matthew 22, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Question 5. Can you keep all this perfectly? No, for I am prone by nature to hate God and my neighbor. Lord's Day 3. Question 6. Did God create man thus wicked and perverse? No, but God created man good and after his own image, that is, in righteousness and true holiness, that he might rightly know God his Creator, heartily love Him, and live with Him in eternal blessedness to praise and glorify Him. Question 7. From where, then, does this depraved nature of man come? From the fall and disobedience of our first parents, Adam and Eve, in paradise, whereby our nature became so corrupt that we are all conceived and born in sin. Question 8. But are we so depraved that we are completely incapable of any good and prone to all evil? Yes, unless we are born again by the Spirit of God. Lord's Day 4, Question 9 Does not God then do injustice to man by requiring of him in his law that which he cannot perform? No, for God so made man that he could perform it. But man, through the instigation of the devil, by willful disobedience, deprived himself and all his descendants of this power. Question 10. Will God allow such disobedience and apostasy to go unpunished? Certainly not. But he is terribly displeased with our inborn as well as our actual sins, and will punish them in just judgment in time and eternity. As he has declared, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Question 11. But is not God also merciful? God is indeed merciful, but he is likewise just. His justice therefore requires that sin which is committed against the Most High Majesty of God be punished with extreme that is, with everlasting punishment, both of body and soul. The second part of man's redemption, 
Lord's Day 5, Question 12. Since then, by the righteous judgment of God, we deserve temporal and eternal punishment. How may we escape this punishment and be again received into favor? God wills that his justice be satisfied. Therefore, we must make full satisfaction to that justice either by ourselves or by another. Question 13. Can we ourselves make this satisfaction? Certainly not. On the contrary, we daily increase our guilt. Question 14. Can any mere creature make satisfaction for us? None. For first, God will not punish any other creature for the sin which man committed, and further, no mere creature can sustain the burden of God's eternal wrath against sin and redeem others from it. Question 15. What kind of mediator and redeemer, then, must we seek? One who is a true and righteous man, and yet more powerful than all creatures, that is, one who is also true God. Lord's Day 6, Question 16 Why must he be a true and righteous man? Because the justice of God requires that the same human nature which has sinned should make satisfaction for sin. But one who is himself a sinner cannot satisfy for others. Question 17 Why must he also be true God? that by the power of his Godhead he might bear in his manhood the burden of God's wrath, and so obtain for and restore to us righteousness and life. Question 18 But who now is that mediator who in one person is true God and also a true and righteous man? Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is freely given unto us for complete redemption, and righteousness. Question 19. From where do you know this? From the Holy Gospel, which God himself first revealed in paradise, afterwards proclaimed by the holy patriarchs and prophets. 